Welcome to our link G4X training part eight. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at working with our digital inputs. Now our digital inputs are gonna be things that we can utilize to have a switching input to our G4X box. So a switching kind of input would be an actual toggle switch or a clutch switch. We might wanna utilize that to turn something on or off within a table or building into some kind of a custom programming routine in our software. So if we're working with something like nitrous control, we need to have an arming switch. We would use a digital switched input to be able to have that arming switch in to allow the nitrous to function and work within our software. We also use digital inputs for things like wheel speed sensors or vehicle speed sensors. That's gonna be sending a constant pulsed input depending on how quickly the vehicle is traveling down the road. And we need to know how to go in and configure then the calibration details for that wheel speed sensor so it's gonna be displaying the correct speed and that we can repurpose that for something like boost control or traction control. There's a lot of things to cover here in order to work with our digital inputs. So let's jump into this video so we can check everything out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our digital inputs in our Link G4X software. In the past few videos, we've looked at how to set up and work with our analog inputs. The digital inputs are gonna be different. It's a pulsed input signal to the Link, where an analog input was a voltage signal or a resistance style signal, Resistance would be from a temp sensor. Voltage would be from something like a pressure sensor. So the digital inputs are going to be different and they have completely different configuration and setup compared to an analog input. In fact, I've created a separate dedicated page for digital inputs. We can find that right here to separate it from the analog inputs. So we have our AI page, analog inputs, DI, that's gonna be for digital inputs. So we're gonna be looking at it in a completely different page layout and have a very dedicated area so we can set up a digital input because again, it's completely different the way we're going to configure things. So digital inputs, some examples here, something like a clutch switch or something like a momentary switch, we can utilize those for something like traction control uh, to turn something on or off. Or if we're talking about a momentary switch, we might want to set up kind of a rolling anti-lag effect. We would use a momentary switch to be able to accomplish that. So that would be an example of a digital input. Some other examples would be wheel speed sensors or a transmission speed sensor. We're going to have a pulsed input coming in. So it's going to be constantly pulsing. The faster it pulses, the greater the rate of speed the vehicle's traveling. So we're able to put a calibration within the link so it understands how many pulses per minute are coming in to translate that into a speed reading. So I'm gonna show you how to work with either a switched input or a pulsed input in this training tutorial. Let's jump into our digital input page and take a look at the setup and the page and all the details we need to know in order to make this work properly. So we're gonna go from our basics page and move into our page label DI. AI, that's for analog input, DI, digital input. Let's jump in here and take a look. So within our page here, we're gonna have a whole bunch of boxes that we can populate and start to work with. We're gonna find that we have a DI1, that's our digital input one. We're gonna find we also have a DI2, that's our digital input two. We're not gonna do anything with these at the moment, but we have all these other boxes available within our screen right now. And we're taking a look, we have our clutch switch. That's gonna be one type of digital input. We have a brake NC that's gonna be our normally closed brake switch. We also have a brake NO that's our normally open brake switch. So if we wanna wire in a brake switch into the link to show if we were on the brakes and logging for logging purposes, we could do that. So that's gonna be one way we can set these up. Clutch switch could be used for something like our launch control. We could tie it in. We could also use a clutch switch for um, something like an anti-stall programming in our software. There's all kinds of reasons we might wanna go and set up a clutch switch. So these are the hard fixed uh, parameters that we can program within the software to designate our digital inputs into. Um, let's take a look at some more examples here. We have a fault code clear switch. We know that we've, we have generate any codes up here. We can jump into our event log and we can go to clear fault codes. That'll clear the codes out. We can, uh, alternative to that, without having a laptop hooked up, we can have a switch that we set up here on a digital input That'll clear the codes out when we designate it under the fault code clear switch. Taking a look, we also have an ethanol sensor. Ethanol sensors are going to be a frequency output from the sensor that we wire into the link. The frequency is gonna be 50 hertz to 150 hertz linear scale. The only way to work with an ethanol sensor is to set it up on a digital input because it is gonna be a frequency or pulse based. That frequency, the 50 to 150 hertz scale, is gonna be how many times it's gonna be sending a pulsed input into the link. So depending on what that frequency is going to be, it's going to know what the ethanol content is going to be. We're going to cover the ethanol sensor setup and configuration in another video that's dedicated to doing flex fuel style tuning. I just wanted to point out that it is in our setup window here for digital inputs because it is a digital style input. 
We're also gonna find that we have ignition switch. Some vehicles are gonna to have to have ignition switch set up here. In this case, for my Atom G4X that I'm working with, I have it set to always on because I'm bypassing the ignition switch. I don't need to set up and configure ignition switch, but that is an option in the programming logic if we wanted to utilize our digital inputs here. We also have a lock timing switch. Lock timing switch would lock our timing at a static value. If we're trying to check our timing with a timing light, we'd be able to do that and work with an external switch. That's not really useful, but it's there in the programming logic. We also have a math meter that we could set up. Certain mass airflow sensors are a digital style input. If we're working with something like a Ford Coyote map sensor. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.